The value of trust. How what we say and what we believe affects the price of trade. We are living in a global village where every day there is a tremendous amount of merchandise flowing through the globe. Almost every country participates in this global trade. Among them, there are two key players. The United States is the leading importer and China is the leading exporter. This huge amount of global trade bring us to the supply chain society. Look at the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, the cars that we drive, and the electronics that we use. All of them are collaborative efforts of the business partners within global supply chains. This means our lives depend on the promises and agreements between these supply chain partners. Now, what if these agreements fail? We have seen many, many examples of failures because someone in the supply chain broke their promises. The consequences can be there are millions of valuable capital tied up in excess inventory. And oftentimes, people's lives also suffer when jobs are lost. When promises and agreements are broken in a supply chain, someone has to pay. Excess inventory, lost sales, higher prices, lost jobs, stock collapse. Someone has to pay. Promises between business partners are so important. Now, what is in a promise? Every promise in a business relationship starts with a forecast. Let me now explain to you how a forecast works. Imagine that there is a supply chain with retailers selling products in the market and suppliers producing for the retailers. Retailers may want to share some demand forecast information with the suppliers to help the suppliers with production planning. And in return, suppliers want to produce enough products and inventory so that retailers can satisfy market demand. In the perfect situation where everybody keeps their promises, the supply chain can satisfy all the market demand and on the other hand, will not have too much inventory tied up in the warehouse. However, that doesn't happen all the time. When someone in the supply chain breaks their promises, sometimes we'll see that suppliers have too much inventory tied up in their warehouses, and at other times, we see that retailers may miss out on potential market demand. This is what will happen when there are uncertainty and risk in the environment. Because of demand uncertainty, retailers will have an incentive to inflate their forecast information when communicating that information with the suppliers. And in return, suppliers would have the incentive to reduce production to protect themselves. These uncertainty and risk create conflicting interests in the supply chain, as well as a motivation for someone in the supply chain to deviate from their prior agreements. Now, how can we solve this problem? One solution is to create trust in the supply chain. And this is what my research is about. Supply chain information sharing is indeed one of the most active research area in operations. Prior works have primarily focused on the economics of the supply chain. That is, how the financial in incentives of the business partners affect their decision making. Now, what I am interested in is the emotional aspect of the supply chain. And in particular, how the inherent tendency to be trusting and trustworthy affects human decision makers' behavior in this interaction and the resulting efficiency of the supply chain. In order to study that, I designed three experiments. In the first experiment, we focused on understanding when trust arises 
in a supply chain relationship. And in order to test that, we designed an experiment with a business simulation game where participants make decisions as if they are the suppliers and the retailers in the supply chain. And in order to test the boundary of trust, we created the environment such that participants only interacted with each other on a one-time basis and anonymously. In addition, they are provided monetary incentives to get the best deal possible, even at the expense of the other party's benefits. When there is perfect trust in the supply chain, that is, when the retailer's forecast is truthful and the suppliers produce to that forecast, then this is the picture that we would expect. Everything is in perfect alignment. However, that was not what we observed in our experiment. What we observed was this relatively noisy picture. This picture compared what the retailer knows about the market demand with what the retailers told their suppliers. We saw that as there's more market uncertainty in the environment, retailers tended to inflate their forecast information more. For example, when the retailers were selling fashion products. However, the retailers did care about gaining trust from their suppliers and they did not inflate their information to the maximum possible level. In return, suppliers tended to trust the retailer's report, although they consistently produced something lower than the perfect situation. When the risk in the environment increased, we did see that suppliers began to reduce their production. And this would happen, for example, when their suppliers were selling risky products such as aircrafts. So what we learn from the first experiment is that trust indeed is present in the supply chain. And it can be influenced by the uncertainty and the risk in the supply chain, in part driven by different characteristics of different types of products. And we have a way to measure trust. The second experiment ties back to the global picture. Here, the focus is to try to understand in a supply chain that involves both Chinese and US business partners, how does the cultural identity of the business partners affect their tendency to trust, and as a result, the efficiency of the supply chain. In order to do that, we designed a second experiment where everything was the same as the first experiment, except that now participants came from both China and the United States, and their nationalities were highlighted to their business partners. Now, what I will show you next is how the retailer's trustworthiness and the supplier's trust depend on their cultural identity. Starting with the retailer's trustworthiness, here I take the US retailer's behavior as the benchmark and compare to the Chinese retailer's behavior. We saw that the Chinese retailers are significantly less trustworthy compared to the US. In other words, there are more trustworthiness in the US society. On the supplier side, again, taking the US supplier's production and trust as the benchmark, we see that the Chinese suppliers are again significantly less trusting than their US counterparts. Importantly, we do see that Chinese suppliers tend to trust their US partners more. So although trust is generally lower in China, Western companies should see an opportunity that they can leverage and capitalize on the higher trust that their Chinese business partners extend towards them. The third experiment pushed our research one step forward. And here, our question is, 
if business partners interact with each other on a long-term basis, how does that long-term relationship impact trust and the efficiency of trade? This is a particularly important question because the Chinese business society is characterized and tremendously influenced by the norm of guanxi. And guanxi is essentially extensive personal networks and long-term connections. In order to test how long-term relationships affect supply chain information sharing, in the third experiment, we allowed the participants to interact with each other repeatedly. And what we will do is to compare the results from this third experiment with the results in the second experiment where interaction was still on a one-time basis. Let me first show you how the retailer's trustworthiness change compared to the second experiment. We first observe that the US retailers become more trustworthy in long-term relationships. The same for the Chinese retailers, but the improvement is much, much more dramatic. On the supplier side, US suppliers may increase or decrease trust when they interact with their business partners repeatedly. We observe that Chinese suppliers universally increase their trust in a long-term relationship. So what we learn here is indeed long-term relationships have a much more influential role in Chinese business society than in the US society, proving the importance of guanxi. Given all of these results, now we may ask, what is the right supply chain strategy? Our first experiment told us that trust will work for some products, but it may not work for others. So as a company, you need to think about the types of products and the market environment that you operate in in order to analyze how much you can take advantage of trust. Our second and third experiment says that Western companies should see an opportunity to capitalize on their positive images in order to encourage more trust from their Chinese business partners. And in addition, securing long-term relationships and starting building the guanxi with their Chinese business partners is very essential. For the Chinese companies, they should also learn to be more open and transparent to their business partners because in the end of the day, building a trusting, cooperative supply chain society is going to benefit everyone. Now, what I have been talking about is a supply chain relationship. And this is only one of many, many relationships a company has to deal with in their businesses. And we see that being trusting and trustworthy can bring a lot of the benefit for all parties in the supply chain. So how trusting and trustworthy are you? Thank you.